Benjamin Franklin was born in 1706 into a family of very modest means. Today they'd probably be called lower middle class at best. His parents had just enough money to send him to school for a couple of years in hope that he could eventually join the clergy. But by the age of 10, he was done with school. He was a print shop apprentice by the age of 12, climbing around on printing presses, sorting letters, mixing ink, and all of the other tasks needed to keep a printing press running. From that humble background, Franklin became a highly successful printer, a well-known writer, a scientist, a politician, and a diplomat, among the many other hats he wore. During those efforts, he accumulated enough wealth to effectively retire independently wealthy in his 40s, and he largely devoted the rest of his life to public service and his individual interests. He was such a towering figure in American Revolution that he was deservedly called the first American. His light shines bright even today. He wasn't always like that. Franklin started by taking a critical look at his behavior, and he found out that too often he traveled down unvirtuous roads and fell short of his ideal in more than a dozen areas in his life. He concluded he ate and drank too much. He talked too much, especially about himself. He spent more money than he should. He didn't finish all his goals and so on. But he beat all these negative traits and became successful. One of the things that has really stood out to me about Ben Franklin is the fact that he attributed most of his success beyond that of luck to practicing 13 core life virtues to the best of his ability. He believed that by living those virtues, he had done everything he could to put himself in a position to be on the good side of the unexpected events of life. He actually had an incredible system for working on those virtues, which I want to talk about today. They are famously known as Ben Franklin's Virtue Cards. For a large portion of Franklin's life, he carried around a card in his pocket that depicted a simple table with seven columns and 13 rows on it. Each column on this card represented a day of the week, Monday through Sunday. Each row on this card represented one of the 13 virtues that he wanted to work on. During the day, he might glance at these virtues a time or two to keep them fresh in his mind. At the end of the day, however, he'd pull out a pen and go through those virtues, asking himself if he'd actually practiced them during the day and marking the box if he had done so. His goal was to fill in as many boxes as possible. And each week, he would start anew with a fresh blank chart. That wasn't all. Not all the charts were identical. In fact, he had 13 variations of the charts, which he cycled through every 13 weeks. On the top of each variation of the card was listed one virtue, which was the main one he wanted to practice that week, along with a brief description of what that virtue was. For example, one week he might really focus on frugality, while the next week might particularly focus on temperance. He'd reflect on and record his success with all 13 virtues each day, but he would intentionally focus on just one virtue each week. 13 wasn't just a random number. He chose 13 because that number fits neatly into a calendar. Multiply it by 4 and you get 52, the number of weeks in a year. Franklin would take a single virtue at a time, work on it for a week and then move on to the next. Trying to fix everything that's wrong with you all at once is overwhelming. The virtuous path needs to be broken down to give each area some concentrated time of attention and effort. Every 13 weeks the cycle repeats itself. Over time, these virtues became more and more ingrained in his character. He found himself naturally practicing them more than he once did, which made him into a more well-rounded and successful person, a better participant in society, which he attributed to being a healthy part of the success that he found in almost every attribute of life. So what exactly were these 13 virtues? Number one, temperance. Eat not to dullness, drink not to elevation. This one's pretty simple. Eat until you're not hungry anymore rather than stuffing yourself. Don't eat just for entertainment's sake or for boredom's sake. And stop drinking when it begins to impair your judgment and sensibilities. It's about self-regulating what you put into your body and making the conscious choice to put in only enough for good living. Number two, silence. Speak not but what may benefit others or yourself. Avoid trifling conversation. If you don't have anything of value to add to a conversation, don't do so. Instead, just listen to what's being said and actually listen 
Try to seek out meaningful conversations and avoid meaningless chatter. This doesn't mean that you avoid getting to know other people and small talk, but that you recognize that there is a distinct purpose to such conversations and you keep your focus on that purpose. Idle chatter for no purpose is the problem, and so is speaking just to full space in a conversation. If there is nothing of value to add to the conversation, then just stop. Avoid trifling conversations. Number three, order. Let all your things have their places. Let each part of your business have its time. Keep your physical possessions organized so that you can always find what you need. Do the same with your time so that you always have time for the things that are important to you. If that's a struggle, adopt some form of time management or a smarter approach to one's possessions. If you have too many things that it becomes very difficult to keep them all straight, then this is a call to start downsizing the less important things. Number four, resolution. Resolve to perform what you ought. Perform without fail what you resolve. If you decide to do something, carry through with it. Don't commit to things that you can't follow through on or aren't actually intending to follow through on. Say no if you're asked to do something that you can't actually follow through. In fact, if you're unsure, still say no, just so you're not left with someone else holding the bag due to your failure of resolution. If you say yes, follow through on that yes. Number five, frugality. Make no expense, but to do good to others or yourself, i.e. waste nothing. This is probably my favorite virtue. Don't be wasteful with your money. Whenever you spend money or use something, have it be generally purposeful. You want to get maximum value for the money that you have when you choose to spend it. If you are choosing not to spend it, put it to work for you in some aspect of your life, either by paying down a debt or building an emergency fund or investing or saving for your retirement. Number six, industry. Lose no time. Be always employed in something useful. Cut off all unnecessary actions. Don't spend your time idling. Try to spend your time doing something productive. And if you lack the energy or focus to do the task at hand, find something else that fits where you're at. If you don't have anything on hand to do, spend that time improving yourself. If you're too tired to do anything, sleep. And if the tiredness is consistent, engage in purposeful leisure or talk to a doctor. Number seven, sincerity. Use no hurtful deceit. Think innocently and justly. And if you speak, speak accordingly. Be honest in your words, but also kind in terms of the impact that they can have on others. Don't be hurtful with what you say, but strive to lift up the other person. Don't lie and don't mislead, but don't be cruel with your words either. If you must criticize, find ways to criticize without being brutally honest which is insincere in its intention. Number eight, justice. Wrong none by doing injuries or omitting the benefits that are your duty. Don't bring harm to others for your own benefit. Try to find ways so that everyone involved in your interactions finds some genuine benefit. Seek out solutions so that everyone wins. If you agreed to an arrangement, stick by that arrangement or renegotiate if it's now untenable. Number nine, moderation. Avoid extremes. Forbear resenting injuries so much as you think they deserve. Choosing extreme positions or acting towards others in extreme ways often ends up with negative consequences for you without any real benefit. Avoid taking positions or behaving in ways that bring harm towards others unless you intentionally are bringing harm. In which case, be very careful of how this might end up for you or others. Number 10. Cleanliness. Tolerate no uncleanliness in body, clothes, or habitation. Practice hygiene. Keep your clothes clean. Keep your home clean. Keep your office clean. Keep your teeth clean. This is not only for your own health, but also for how you present yourself to the world. Number 11. Tranquility. Be not disturbed at trifles or at accidents, common or unavoidable. Don't be upset by the unexpected events that life throws at you. They're going to happen. Being upset does not help resolve them. If you recognize your emotions swelling, consciously keep them in check. Learn how to recognize your own emotions inside and understand them without reacting to them or acting upon them. Use them as information instead in order to make better decisions. 
Number 12. Chastity. Rarely use venery, but for health or offspring, never to dullness, weakness, or the injury of your own, or another's peace or reputation. Venery means sexual indulgence. Franklin wants to not let physical passions become a distraction or a main focus in your life. Don't allow it to cause you to betray or harm others. Again, if you find yourself in a position where things are untenable, seek outside help and don't simply toss the virtue to the side because it's difficult to maintain. Last but not the least, number 13, humility. Imitate Jesus and Socrates. Undersell and over deliver in everything that you do. Don't talk about how great you are. Instead, be great and give abundant credit to others. A person who is a true master of these 13 virtues would be a great person indeed and would likely find the great success nearly falls on their lap. This is why Benjamin Franklin is still printed on the $100 bill to this day. So how can we implement this technique in our lives? Make your own virtues. While I believe that these are all worthwhile virtues to practice, one might want to choose other virtues or even personal skills that they want to improve. So substitute them into Franklin's plan. One could easily remove some virtues and substitute other ones, or even start from scratch with all 13 of them. For example, let's say that someone wanted to use this practice to strictly improve their finances. They would likely retain frugality and temperance, but they might want to add other virtues and skills to the mix, such as mastering food preparation, using deliberate practice in one's career path, building social skills and so on. Let's say that you wanted to master becoming a calmer person. You might include things like meditation, stoicism and prayer in your list of virtues. It all depends on what you want to achieve. However, I will say that Franklin's list of 13 virtues really will go a long way towards improving your overall character and life situation. The goal with all this is to come up with a set of very specific virtues or skills that you can apply every single day to become a better person the person you want to be, and then review your progress with those virtues and skills each day. Over time, those skills and virtues would become natural to you, shaping you into the person you desire to become. I hope you found this video helpful. I will be making further self-improvement videos on this channel, so don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.